now like to officially welcome you all to today's event, Women Energize Women, Best Practices in Gender Mainstreaming in the Energy Sector. Energia plus Mujer from Chile. So today's event is part of the Women Energize Women campaign, which is a campaign communication initiative launched by the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy and is being implemented by the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, GIZ, and the German Renewable Energy Federation, BEE. It is part of the global project Bilateral Energy Partnerships and Dialogues, and the main aim of this campaign is to empower, motivate, inform and inspire women working in the energy sector to inspire more women to work in the energy sector, to network with each other, to serve as inspiring role models and to thereby help increase gender equality in the energy sector. This is the second of our events that we are hosting as part of this campaign. My name is Geraldine DeBastian and I'm very honored to be moderating today's event. I'm super excited because I get to now interview Javiera Aldunate, the Director for International Relations from the Chilean Ministry of Energy. As Head of International Affairs, Office of the Chilean Energy Ministry. She is responsible for strategically promoting the country's position in the energy field for furthering international relations, agreements, and multinational collaboration, as well as developing, advancing different policies and programs. And she's going to tell us specifically about one of those policy initiatives today. It's fantastic to have you here with us, Kavira. Thank you so much for taking the time to join the session. Thank you, Geraldine. It's an honor to be here and like transmit the experience of the Energy Plus Women uh, program that it's had been really successful here in Chile and it's and like uh, and we're really proud of it. So the more we can communicate, the more we are achieving. Fantastic. And I'm so excited to learn more about it today. Just as a reminder, please do feel free to post your questions and comments in the chat throughout the event. And in the last 20 minutes, we'll be also opening up if you would like to come in with video and audio. But first, I get to ask you some questions, Javiera. And before we go right into Energia plus Mujer, I would love for you to just lay out the scenes a little bit for us and tell our listeners, our audience, what the current situation is in the energy sector in Chile regarding women's engagement. So what is the current status quo that you're trying to address with this policy initiative? Thank you, Geraldine. As you know, um, the energy sector, especially in an underdeveloped country, is really, really a masculinized uh, sector. So we first, when we when this idea of building this program began, we have to do like a diagnosis to really know what the problem was. We have numbers that are really impressive. So they give us the, like the, the, the push to act. So if I can tell you some numbers uh, that we made in more than uh, raising the information for over more than 41 companies in the energy sector in Chile, uh, only the 23% uh, of women participate in the whole energy sector, only they are only represented by the 23% of women. Uh, and what it's even more like uh, sad is that only 17% 17% of women participate in senior management positions. So we have a really uh, low participation. Uh, only 29% of the promotions are women, and uh, only 17% of the companies have some special uh, uh, program to prevent gender-based violence in the last three years. So um, the main gap, we can say, it's about 22% on, on salary, for example. So we have uh, really like but numbers I can say, and I don't know if the, the translation is the right one, but we have a lot, a lot of uh, work to do because um, these are numbers that weren't realized before we launched the study or the diagnosis. So we're making them clear. We're showing to the industry the importance to make the importance to make something, not just uh, be aware 
of what you see, but the, with real numbers and with, with real indicates, indicators from now on. Yeah, those are very stark numbers and they are, I would say, similarly disappointing to other countries and regions around the world where, as you said correctly, there's just a fraction of women represented in senior management positions. Do you see any differences in different areas of the energy sector in Chile or would you say this is problematic in all areas of the energy sector, whether renewable or more traditional sources? I think uh, renewables are more advanced because of two factors. First, there are more new uh, uh, enterprises, so it's easier to uh, begin your program or your investment or your development, considering that integrating women, it's really important. So the other uh, companies have to do a change, but the new ones are aware of this program, so they are integrating these plans in, in advance. So I think there we have uh, a good uh, a good new. And uh, good news. And also, uh, yesterday, for example, the climate scope from Bloomberg uh, l launched the study that said that Chile was the second country in the world for best investment in renewables. So, if we're really aware of this uh, topic, the importance of women in uh, the industry, we're having good news for women in Chile, I think. Yeah, that is great to hear. And I know you've been putting a lot of work into that. So we'll get maybe a little bit back to this uh, the correlation between gender equality and transition in the energy sector a little bit later in our conversation. But maybe for now, uh, one more question on the barriers. Like where have you seen the key obstacles of more women coming into the energy sector, in particular in leadership positions? Like what is been the barrier in the past? I think that um, the knowledge about the sector, we see it as a really masculine uh, sector, so women are not encouraged to work in it. So the big barrier or the big gap, it's when you enter the sector as or study STEM uh, careers that can lead you to work in the energy sector. I think that's the key barrier, uh, I think, to uh, integrate the w more women in the energy sector. So that's the first one. And afterwards, I think uh, when you have to make the choice to be in a high position, it's really difficult to compatibilize that with your like other issues of uh, women, like uh, being a mother or being or have uh, to to have those options. More of the the most of the energy companies are not in the like in the most important cities in, uh, in Chile, for example, Santiago. So you have to make a decision maybe to travel and live in another in another part of Chile. So you have to be, make big decisions that have to be balanced with your personal life. So I think that's also a big barrier in the first uh, stage when you decide which career do you want to develop, thinking about the energy sector. I think now it's changing, but in the beginning, you don't want to be part of it, but you know it's going to be difficult. So women don't are not encouraged to work in the energy sector. And afterwards, when you have to take like uh, important positions, you are discouraged because of all the barriers and you have to balance that with your personal life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so now the idea is that some of those barriers could be perhaps broken open through some new initiatives. And that's what we want to deep dive on today. So before we start looking at how have you been trying to change something about the status quo, uh, let's just maybe do a little bit of definitions because there's a lot of talk about gender mainstreaming in this field at the moment. And I would love for you to say what you mean by this idea. What do you think the definition of gender mainstreaming, especially in regard to diversification of the energy sector, should be? I think um, the basis of all is, is that we have to uh, face diversity as another business challenge. It's not just like uh, including more people and being more equal, uh, have more equality, but this is this is a business case. So if we treat it like that, 
and give the uh, give the the diversity and and having more women in the energy sector as a real uh, business case we will face it in a better way not just like in a condescent way that we need more women because they're necessary no this is a business case and we have numbers that validate that more women in any sector uh, brings even more uh, economic uh, value to to the company so this is a, a sustainability issue this is a like a justice issue but also this is an economic issue yes absolutely and it's so important to point that out time and again that there are those statistics that very well prove that companies that have gender equality and employ women in senior management positions on the whole do better and this is not just a social cause but as you said an economic cause cause as well. So let's start talking about what you've done to change the status quo, because I know you're extremely engaged in your work to help change things. And of course, we want to deep dive today into the policy initiative established by the Chilean Ministry of Energy in 2016, Energia Plus Mujer. So can you start by outlining what is part of this program and yeah, what have you included in this Energia Plus Mujer initiative so far? We can, I can say that this plan has been divided like in three phases. So we are now in the phase three. Uh, and that's good news because we had advanced really, really fast. I think the phase one, as I said before, it was about awareing, awareness, like building awareness in the industry, raising that awareness, the necessity of this to be done, the, the need of uh, include more women and set like the third diagnosis, as I said before, and also compare exper experiences with other countries, how far away of developed uh, countries or uh, countries with a good model we were. So uh, I, we compared experiences with Islandia, with Germany, with Canada, with the UK, with Spain, and see where were, uh, where was Chile in comparison with all those countries. After that, we make a diagnosis, as I said, and also choose a model to as a reference. We have the WGE a that explorer from Australia that we thought it was the best for us to to be applied here in Chile. So we take that kind of model to set the plan. After that, in uh, 2018, we we'll build this really interesting that I think this is one of the the main uh, uh, factors of the success of the of the plan is we built a pu public private working table composed of 26 participants uh, participating organization trade unions uh, of national reach and replied in most of the regions of the country so we have a cross cutting opinions cross cutting uh, information that make this plan be really like uh, real uh, and raise the problems and the issues that everyone had and how we can compare each other. So I think that's really crucial during uh, the building of the plan. After that, when we have the diagnosis and this public, private, private, uh, private, uh, public working table, we could build our first plan. This first plan was uh, a plan with 10 axes, uh, 14 measures and 40 actions. If you can uh, take a look on all the plan, we have uh, the, the, the interesting thing of the plan is that we have a different plan measure like strategic, structural, programmatic, instrumental, symbolic. So, all the, the the stages and all the the phases of the of the different work we have to do to achieve more women in, in the energy sector are taken on consideration. So we have like policy plan making and selection and uh, labor uh, trajectory of women and participation in the, in an insertion from the first stage in the in 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 the energy sector how do you develop your career for example how do you uh, make the balance as I said before in in your personal and labor uh, uh, life uh, violence health and security during your work in the in the sector, governance and politics do in inside the each company. So the interesting thing is we have like the 
specific acts with what's the measure of that specific acts and which are the actions that we propose to make to make this uh, this uh, these achievements be 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 real so you you can make like a checklist and this is yes i'm doing this and in this and you compare you can compare yourself with others it's, okay i have this uh, acts really developed but in this one, I have never uh, been aware of the importance of that. So you have a real plan with uh, indicators and with measurements that are uh, that give you uh, information. So that's really easy to to apply and to achieve. The other thing that is important is that this plan was validated with over 60 uh, organizations that we uh, like make a revision of all the plan and make comments. So it was, it was a really cross-cutting uh, plan with different, uh, I don't know, political positions, different kind of, of uh, companies, small companies, big companies, and that really make uh, this plan belong to everyone that that uh, built it, not just a uh, politic uh, uh, a policy that was made from the government, and you say this is a just suggestion. No, this was a a, a plan that was built from all the uh, actors of the system. So. <clears throat> um... Let's circle back on a couple of the points that you made. Uh, first of all, of course, congratulations also to this initiative and all the successes that you've had with us. I'm sure you're going to also we'll take some time to talk about some of the lessons learned in a minute. Um, so, but but first of all, I would like to know maybe the pre-process that went in. So, how did you go about making sure that you have the right partners from the private sector on board and that this sort of cross inspiration between private sector stakeholders can happen as well so that it's <clears throat> clear that you are um, doing this as a government initiative but it sounds like one of the powerful factors was really the partnerships involved and making sure that there's also this sort of let's say peer communication in the private sector going. I think we have some uh, somehow uh, we build a momentum when we uh, when you see that this this is an issue that is racing you want to participate so we just uh, take advantage of that momentum and and make collaboration a key uh, factor for success so if you were there you really want to be there and be part of the, the of one of the actors that was building the plan plan so i think that was really well managed as a as an incentive that you have or you are in or you're out, but you uh, being in, it's a really good thing for you and your organization and for building a, a, a better future for your organization. Yeah, so I'm so interested how you got that dynamic going because exactly, that sounds like you reached that sort of tipping point where others found it really attractive to also join the initiative and wanted to be part of it. But I'm sure it's not easy to get that traction going. So I can imagine in other countries, you know, there's ministries perhaps that try to initiate this kind of activity but then find it quite hard to get this traction so is there any sort of point of advice maybe you had some key stakeholders that you included in the design of the initiative or other measures that you took to make sure that certain people would be on board i think uh, the first thing is that we have a long-term energy plan, uh, plan. Uh, that includes uh, the, uh, the 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 this factor as a, as a key one. So at the first, for example, in 2010, we have like a a commission that uh, makes some some advices in which lines uh, we were lacking or we were behind, and there were there was where this. Uh, this uh, promoting the insertion of women was like the first red light. And when we build this, um, this energy plan for, it's for 2050, so it's a really long-term energy plan, somehow the, the women integration in the sector was like a red light. So when we uh, change of administration in two, uh, 2018, we have an agenda for these four years. And one of that was the, implement the 
there was uh, six uh, axes, and one of that was uh, energy with uh, social seals, the importance of integrating the community and all the aspects of the social, uh, so this, uh, the social uh, factor. And in that, the specific, one of the specific actions was the implementation of measure for the inclusion for, in, for women in energy. So when you have that as a task, you somehow ha have to to achieve it. So uh, I think that the the people that work on the plan was were really uh, smart to think that this has to be a public private working group, not just something that was uh, that born in in the government or the ministry. And then you say this is a good plan. There it is. You can work, uh, you can use it whenever you want. But this was a diagnosis and a, a work that was make uh, involving the public, the public and the private sector. So I think that was the key. I don't, I obviously think it was thought that way, but I think it was, and it's a way that we've been working for another policy making. So it's really, really, I think that's the um, the key for making good things when you involve. And I think that was the key for uh, building this plan with the compromise and the um, the work of all the sector. Yeah, uh, that that makes a lot of sense. And and you can see how this yeah came together for you to join and gather this momentum. So. Maybe let's go back <clears throat> to some of these actions that were developed. And um, it sounded to me like you made very practical things for different organizations to work with. So instead of just creating kind of policy directives and recommendations, you took it down to the level to really give people things that they could work with, like sort of like checklists, career advice. Was that always clear that that was the need of the private sector or how did you sort of go about finding out what what you could give to them to make sure that they could work with something to create change i think as i said before that the big first issue was to create awareness so you can put yourself in like in the whole map and and say oh i'm really lacking of i don't know a, a fair uh, process for uh, choosing uh, the the different uh, positions in my company so you can put yourself and you can see in like in a baseline and see in which aspects you do you have to work so i think uh, that's why the plan has worked because it's, it's really effective and it's really clear and it's really simple. We're not like uh, uh, inventing the wheel. We're just saying these are the people in the sector. You can see uh, where are you, development haven't been developed, and which are the best actions to achieve these goals. So I think it's really clear, it's really simple, and you can compare yourself from year to year with other uh, with other companies, with other uh, organizations, and you say, okay, this is important for me to develop because I'm really kind specific. So I think the whole purpose like, is like so see how do you have to uh, level your how is your after and making work on that? I'm super sorry, Javier, but you're breaking up a little bit. So I think I got most of what you said. Um, but you dropped out a couple of times in that last statement. Um I do totally appreciate the sentiment that this is very good to take this very practical stance and really give something to people to work with. So based on that, I would love to learn what the uptake has been and if you can already say if you can see what kind of effects these very practical things that you're giving people to work with are having and also this idea of comparing oneself to the other like have you created a really healthy competition now in the energy sector for bringing in bringing more women to the table uh, yes, I think we can see changes and because you can compare from one year to another, you can see yourself how have you been evolving in these specific uh, issues or tasks that the plan uh, uh, gives you as a, as, a, as a, like, I don't know, as a framework. And I think that the, the best thing is to break, uh, like, Break the inertia and build up speed in this plan. So in the first, you can 
when people are talking more about it and you can compare yourself with companies that are really doing good stuff and are easy to reply them, uh, you like really want to, to make that change. You can see the benefits of making those changes and you can uh, make it like, uh, develop them in your own company. So we have like, I don't know, uh, really good examples such as uh, empowering women for making uh, pol uh, ma policy making, such as uh, specific regional plans for different uh, um, places of Chile, uh, or for example, our national uh, advisor uh, group, it's 50 50 so you can make like uh, yourself realize the importance of this in concrete things uh, we we encourage dialogue and partnership through different uh, seminars and uh, different specific um, opportunities like building a, a labor um, a space for where you can can you can uh, put all the, the 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 spaces that are available in the energy sector so can so women can apply uh, easily so it's i think it's really specific and have really good uh like work then then you can really apply in your own company we're getting some questions in on the chat so i just want to pop in the question if the actual plan and perhaps also the different actions and what we're speaking about now is online and downloadable as public documents yes it's downloadable you can find it in find it in the in the ministry webpage i can text it afterwards and also uh, you we have a, an annual report that evaluates how this program has been advancing so it's really like uh, you, when you see you are you are achieving your goals, it's really, really good, and uh, and it's kind of we're we, we're moving in the right way, and we have a, a like developed two uh, annual reports that really shows how this has been uh, a part of the the like the energy um, focus during the the energy sector focus. Sorry, in the in the last two years, and the sorry. pandemic helped us. Because it was easier to connect people and to make this like a uh, like use technology uh, to to make people together more easily. Yes, it, at least in that way has had its positive effect. So I'm glad that's also been the case in Chile. Certainly true for Germany as well. And a kind uh, colleague, uh, Michael from JSA, just put the link into the chat. So thank you very much for that. I want to start talking about the evaluation that you do in just a moment. Maybe before we go there, you can just help me recap. So you said there are three key steps um, in the action plan. Step one was raising awareness. Can you just recap step two and step three for me? The first one, the first one is raising awareness, as I said, and that's uh, part of that is making a diagnosis and uh, and make uh, like sensibilization in the industry that's the first uh, first phase the second was uh, impl implement this plan by bringing public and private sector together to raise all the issues that we could put in the plan and the third phase was monitoring and community meeting in a uh, in really regularly like uh, year by year which has been the advances and in in which are the 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 most successful areas that we've been developing developing with the plan so it's great because in a way i understood through this constant monitoring you also work quite iteratively so you can see what measures are taking effect and where there might be some adjustment to do. Maybe you can share with us a little bit how the evaluation is being done for the program. Uh, that was one of the key issues as well for the plan for 21 and 22, uh, 2020 and 2021 that makes uh, the, like, the working groups for building this monitoring uh, during the years. So the governance of the plan, it's really important as well, because you, you have to have the, the people to, to make the, like having all the, what you don't measure, it doesn't exist. So measuring constantly 
which how many actions have you been making in the supply chain? How many actions with the community? How many actions in governance, in uh, gender violence, in uh, balance with uh, with uh, with uh, labor, uh, so your your work and family? Um, the same salary payment, uh, the promotion of leadership, the how you build your your like your work line in the future, uh, your like in the big picture and the strategic uh, strategic uh, administration of those uh, access are really really important. So I think those are the main ten, and you can and and we have this this special uh, commissions that defi uh, have defined the, the targets and the pro progress indicators for each one of these 10 uh, exits. And now, once uh, I understand there's a complete sort of evaluation for the program that's being planned for the next year that's coming, can you share us a little bit what is going to happen in that process? I think that we're really focusing in these four program articulation that I told you before, that it's in empowerment, how we increase women participation in decision making, productivity, uh, how women and the, uh, are part of the sustainability energy development, entrepreneurship, and how men, uh, women economics empowerment and value generation, and cross-cutting actions that are important for making these actions in the future. So each one of these uh, like four uh, big topics has, as I said, uh, a governance of the plan with commissions and definition of target, tar target to see how we are advancing in these uh, specific issues. Uh, for example, last year, uh, when we make our yearbook, we have 80, uh, 853 actions and over a 75% of a compliance of the plan. So it's really uh, easy to compare and to see in which part it's uh, more difficult to develop actions to be aware of, promote the action in that specific, uh, specific uh, field. Right. And so I have a couple of questions around sort of the, what you've seen and how you think this is going to develop. Um, I understand Energia Plus Mujer to have focused on also quite necessary short-term goals. So how do you bring this uh, perspective of change into organizations, but also really get them to act fast? Do you see any um, further policy actions that should be complementary to the program you've created in terms of more sort of long-term policy interventions? Or do you think this kind of awareness raising and also the educational effects of the initiative are going to be enough to do that and have that effect on the more long-term scope? I hope the second one, that once you uh, install the, the topic in the sector, it will move like by itself in a natural way in, a, in an organic way we're we're waiting for that because when you build so much like policy around it it makes it more i don't know more easy to achieve uh, or, sorry more difficult to achieve and you have like more uh i don't know uh, i think this is a topic that will bring so much uh, benefits to each company or, and organizations that they will promote it themselves we just uh, make the standards and the baseline for the work and afterwards you will be comparing yourself with, with another, seeing the benefits in your own uh, company. We can see right now really good uh, examples like Cerro Dominador that um, all the women who built the mirrors for the solar panels or women that live in the a nearby community that is called Maria Elena. And one of the like super, uh, I don't know, little details, but uh, there were less than 80% of the mirrors were broken because the women are really uh, effective and really caring about the mirrors. So there's like an economic factor that's really small like the the in building 
women are more delicate and 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 this is uh, one of the uh, a little effect that you can see and the bigger effect is that people that lives in the community of, Ma of Maria Elena they feels that their ears are theirs or they are part of the community they belong to that uh, company they are important for them so you build more community you be, you build more future of your company well, aspects are uh, important for you uh it's definitely yeah like i said it's so impressive what you have achieved already and and i obviously share the hope that it's going to unleash these long-term effects as well is there anything that you would change like looking back on the initiatives and the last five years of implementation or where you would say okay these are some lessons learned like taking out of the process for yeah, things you would do exactly the same or things you would do totally differently. Uh, I think that the process is difficult to to look back and say, oh, I have. Uh, I think the main thing is to communicate and maybe we can community uh, communicate as much as we should, because when you have these examples and this like plan that is so easy to achieve, I think we our responsibility is to communicate better and try to make it more easy to repl replicate. Like, for example, we have been um, replicating this in Honduras and in Mexico, and we're building some like a cooperation with other countries, but I think the work in collaboration with other countries is really important. So I think communication is an issue that we're always lacking because it's difficult to communicate. You are more focused on working than on communicating, but I think communication is a key factor for the success of the program. Do you have pieces of advice? I think there's a lot of people already today in the room, but also maybe people who watch the recording of this, who are really interested in perhaps kicking off similar initiatives in their countries or their regions. So what would be like pieces of advice that you would give to people looking at uh, doing something like that? I think the importance of the diagnosis and have specific numbers. When you have some indicators that are really easy to follow, you can achieve much more. So it's really, really important that they have a specific uh, factor, a specific indicators, a specific ways to measure them. I think that's the key of success. Having these indicators and you can compare year by year, month by month with other companies, with other organizations, I think, I think that's the key. Could you just repeat the last sentence? Uh, I said that the importance of measuring and having specific indicators Communicate and measure always, and that has to be like an iterative process that you communicate and measure. Communicate and measure, I think that's the key factor for the success of a plan, not mm -hmm. just Energia Plus. Yeah, because I'm wondering how can you, like, for instance, just looking, um, and somebody shared, thank you for sharing that in the chat earlier, the numbers that you shared in the beginning, like the disparities that exist currently in the energy sector are very similar here as well, or in other nor northern European countries too. And and I believe there are also the numbers to do the backing up. And yet it seems really hard to be able to kick off an initiative like this and unleash some change. So maybe there's also some uh, people listening. Of course, we have a new government taking seat. So perhaps also some note taking to do from your session for the next um, legislation period in Germany here. We are opening up for questions and comments from the audience. So if you would like to ask a question yourself to Javiera, then please just use the little raise hand sign, give me a little sign of hand or just a little wave in the chat. And I would be very happy to hand over to you for your audio and video to ask a question. So floor is open for all of your questions as well. Whilst those are coming in, perhaps uh, some bigger picture questions. And I would also love to ask you a couple of personal questions, if that's OK, regarding your career in the energy sector. Um, as of course, we are in the session Women Energize Women, and you are definitely one of these role models that we are looking to learn from and looking up to. And thanks already. There's also lots of thank you messages in the chat for the experiences you've shared so far. So we had uh, one previous situation where I 
was allowed to ask you some questions and meet you for the first time. And there I learned a lot about the competitive advantage that Sheila is also hoping to gain through your <clears throat> very large emphasis on decarbonization and really trying to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 and this big push for renewable energy, in particular also green hydropower, etc. So do you see a correlation in some of the policy initiatives that Chile is putting forward, the correlation we just hinted at earlier a little bit between the renewable energy sector and this big emphasis and push that you were doing on a national level that way and increasing gender equality in the energy sector. How is your hope that these two are going to go hand in hand in the next years? I think the, because, as, uh, as I said before, because it's a new industry and we are develop, uh, developing uh, from scratch, like the hydrogen industry that it's really popping here in Chile, I think that this gender issue is already integrated in that vision that we want to develop for the future. So I think we are, uh, that's, a, as I said before, good news. And also uh, that we're really aware of it and, there, and we have built all our programs and policies in the last year with participation, not just women, but the communities and all that. Uh, actors that are involved in the development of the uh, uh, different industries. So I think the the good news is that with all this development of renewable, with our plan for decarbonization for 2050, these are one, uh, this specific issue of integrating more women is one of the tasks that we have already, already realized that it's important for the future. So it's not going to be like, installed but it's already developing so i think that's one of the big uh, changes or the mind changing that the program and the plan has made in our industry here in chile are there any hopes or wishes how others should copy and follow suit i know when we spoke first time there was also this question how do you hope european countries might take bolder steps towards policies for the green energy transition, but also for gender equality? Like, what would be your hope there? I think we have a lot to learn from each other. Uh, this is a plan that fits for Chile, but every country, every different culture has their specific need. So I think we have uh, to work more in collaboration. There's a lot of organization, international organization that can help us like a build um, like a world uh, world baseline. I think we have built our own baseline here in Chile, but I think we have a lot to share and a lot of best uh, or good practices to share with other countries. So we're not just working ourselves uh, in, in an independent way. When we share these practices and share our problems and share our uh, difficulties, I think it's much more easy to work. So uh, this is not a just a Chile plan. I think we should build a, a more integrated plan with other countries, with different cultures, with different developing, uh, with different uh, uh, types of economy. And I think that's one of the uh, the a nice uh, goal that we have to build together. Yes, absolutely. In particular, of course, targeting those actors who are also transnational, international actors in the energy sector, which makes so much sense to join efforts and have yeah, mutual targets to meet and, and campaigns to run that build up on these fantastic national initiatives uh, like the one that you've created. So another question I would like to ask, and especially because we're just undergoing this process in Germany as well, you have elections coming up, I believe. And of course, that's always great also to invite change and have um, the idea that something new might happen but at the same time of course the idea of continuity and securing good policies that are working and good initiatives that you're working are so important so how do you hope you will be able to create continuity in this area that you have been working on as i said before we have a long-term energy plan for 2050 and that plan was built with all uh, the political sectors, with all uh, the community, it was a really, we have over, I think, 50 workshops with different uh, parts of the country from all 
I don't know, from all types, like politicians and the community and the and the uh, the companies and the organizations that uh, that participate in the energy sector. So we have a really common view, and I think that will be part of any government uh, that comes in the next administration. This was built together. So my my hope is that we, this will continue because it was a construction of a lot of factors, not just this government in, in closed offices without looking outside. This was built for a long-term vision that we, it was built with all the actors of the sector. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you basically just got it right from the start and that's going to give you the base for continuity. Hope so. Hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. But yes, uh, it does sound like you've tried to put everything in place. And of course, this big cross-party or cross-stakeholder um, commitment is going to be a key in that. I, I'm going to keep asking questions, though, if they're not coming on, because I would really love to know also a little bit more about you, Javier. I think it's so interesting when I read your biography and the steps you've taken. It's not, at least it didn't seem to me, like the typical civil servant, policymaker career, if I may say so. And I was just curious to hear how you feel. So if I can share with our audience that you are a designer by profession and you've also taught yeah, design methodology <clears throat> and social innovation and how you perhaps think that this mindset that you have is also now supporting you in designing good policies and designing for yeah public sector interventions. I think one of the advantages that I had had from, uh, from being a designer is that I, I had always faced this process, like the diagnosis and make a plan and then measure. That's part of the design thinking process. So when I saw this plan of uh, Energy Plus Women, it makes sense to me. When you have a plan that you uh, you have step by uh, step what you have to make, uh, it's the way that a designer works. You have to build a plan, build a product that you want to achieve in the future, and you make a plan to, to make it. So it was really uh, like we, and the process of the design a thinking process with where you empathize or empathize, empathize with your uh, counterpart and that's why I think this program makes so much sense to me. Uh, it, I think it was built in the right way and it's really nice to be a designer in in another sector with where I think I'm the only designer in the energy sector because you can see the things with uh, with another outside the box, with another way of thinking, and with an a, a creativity, with a creative, sorry, with a creative mindset to to see how things can be implemented. So uh, I really love this program, but because it has that background, that background to involve people, to measure, to evolve, and to iterate once and again and make it better. It's it's not just a reading in stone. This is a program and a plan that is changing year by year, focusing in the in the in the parts that we are uh, developing more slower. And I th and I think that's part of the of the big issue of the of this uh, of the success of this uh, of this plan. And is it um, unusual, or is it becoming more and more mainstream to have people with your kind of professional background and career path also work in government in Chile? I think it's a being more mainstream because uh, I, as you said, I have been a teacher. I have been a teacher for over 15 years, and one of the advices that I give to my students is that you have to build your career complementing your interest. So when you love what you do and you bring into a table all you're interested, it's much more easy to work with passion and build like a career that you love. So I think when you have passion and you have the interest to to make like I, I don't know to to make a, a difference in the in your workplace. I think it it's really show up 
and it's much better, to, much easier to be uh, very professional. I really love what I do. I really love to be in a sector that is evolving this fast with this uh, like basis that uh, integrating women and building a renewable world for for our kids and focusing in climate ch change and the actions that we have to make now. I'm really passionate about about that, and I think that's because I have built my career and in what I really love. So that's my big advice. And when you do that, I think people notice and and the world's changing that way. You don't have to be like an engineer to work in the energy sector. And that's why what I really promote for women and, and women in energy. Please don't feel that you have to, to be an electric engineer to be part of this sector. You have to be passionate. You have to be uh, have a goal. You uh, really want to uh, want to to be uh, uh, an important key part of this uh, of the whole uh, world of energy. That's absolutely beautifully said, and your passion teletransports all the way uh, into our team's room here. There's one more question that just came in from the chat. So will you have that, even though this is already a perfect, super inspirational statement for our women, Energize Women session. So a question came in saying, I'd like to ask which changes in attitudes and consciousness you have witnessed in the past years in the energy sector. Do you have the impression that minds have been changing in the traditional part of the energy sector as well? So one more question on, on the impact and the change you're seeing. And I was also going to have you point out, maybe I'll combine this uh, just because we're going to run out of time in a few minutes, that your passion transports, because we, uh, I've learned you don't just do this in your day job. You also are the creator of a leadership development program for women in energy in Chile that uh, is a network and mentors different women. So I thought maybe you could just mention that quickly in case that's also of interest to some people in our audience. Absolutely. That's uh, that program was uh, a creation when I were uh, and I work in the World Energy Council because I witnesses I witness the lack of women in the sector. I went to a big event and I was the only uh, woman in the event. So I said maybe I'm wrong. This is this was not the event that I was supposed to come. Uh, were women here in? in this in this uh, event so we develop a really interesting uh, program for that like when we talk about those specific years when you have to make that difficult decision to uh, to be part of a more a higher position this program is built for those women when you're taking decisions for your future say so which are the the specific uh, tools that I need to improve my uh, professional career. So it's focused in leadership, in communication, in networking, and it has really been a, a game changer, I think, in the in the industry because we have much more women that are connecting with the, with each other and uh, sharing uh, experiences and sharing uh, knowledge. And I think that's the key factor for build, uh, for integrating more women into the sector. Build a big network, feel uh, that you can share all your experiences with another women. So that has been really a really inspirational uh, space for all of us. Wonderful. And that is a wonderful statement to close our session on. Thank you so much, Javiera, for being here for us today and answering all my questions and sharing so many of your super valuable insights and also your passion with us today. So, gracias. Thank you so much, Geraldine. I'm really sorry about my, conne my connection. I hope everyone could hear me at least some few words that make sense for all of you and thank you so much and i really think we have to energy energize more women so i love the the topic and i love the name of this specific uh, space so i hope we can continue seeing each other in the future face by face hopefully 
I would love that too. And I definitely love this second opportunity to meet you online and be in conversation. And I also hope of uh, many more opportunities to come. So I look forward to those. And we definitely heard you perfectly. And it was good to see you a little bit at least as well. So before uh, we go, I'd like to also say thank you to our audience. Thank you for everybody for joining and the questions and comments that you shared. Also for sharing the links to resources and the chat. It's always great to see networking and collaboration happen happen during these sessions as well. And of course, if you're not already doing so, I would very much like to invite you to follow what's going to happen in the upcoming events of this campaign next year by following us on social media. So you can plug into what's going on on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and on our website with the handle Women Energize Women. And yeah, we're going to be back in January with an event on different female founders in the sector. And I hope you all have a wonderful, festive end of year season. Stay safe and healthy. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you next time and getting your feedback in the evaluation form in the meanwhile. And thank you again, Javier. Thank you. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.